this is an easy watercolour project about sailboats that uses torn bits of paper and a bit of gouache. At the end of the video I'll show you an excellent test for how to tell whether or not your watercolour is opaque. It's a really quickie and easy method to work it out. So I've torn lots of bits of paper, they're just bits of printout scrap paper and I've torn them into triangles and little bits down the bottom are more triangles and created a composition that I found quite satisfying. I've come in with yellow ochre and I follow that up with that beautiful cobalt turquoise light that I absolutely love and for the sky colour I've chosen ultramarine Usually French ultramarine is on my palette. That's my Quilla palette that I'm using on the left. You can see there it's a round ceramic palette. I've got a video on that if you want to follow that one up. It's absolutely brilliant. Best palette I ever had. You can see me putting in lots and lots of sky at the moment and the paper is so beautifully saturated and I'm using beautiful quality paper. It's a half sheet of ash. And that means when you're using beautiful paper that it um, absorbs water in a different way and in fact it kind of repels the water. That's what beautiful paper, watercolour paper does. It slowly allows the watercolour to enter the fibres. So you can see in, within five minutes I've gotten down all of my colour and then I get to the fun part which I absolutely love which is to tip. I use gravity all the time in my watercolours tipping the excessive amount of water and paint that I love to splash onto the page and then tipping it. But I'm being quite specific. I tip it from a landscape position to the other landscape position. You can tip it any way you want, of course, but because I'm painting a landscape, I love the idea that I paint in with landscape strokes. So you'll see me do that over and over, big landscape strokes, and then I tip in a landscape direction. For this darker greeny blue, I've added the three colours that I'm using together. The turquoise, the ultramarine, and then I've added the yellow ochre into the mix. Because I wanted a slightly darker colour, I'm using that darker colour to hopefully bring your eye into my composition. And that's why it's coming in in that triangular motion. More gravity. Uh, that I absolutely love and a bit of mopping up really helps because you don't want the back of the paper to be too moist. What you want is just enough moisture so that you can paint for, uh, I don't know, about 10 minutes. And now I'm changing the direction of my gravity um, lift and I was allowing the paint to move in a downwards direction. You can see the result of that there. I let it dry, completely air dry overnight. It, it would take a couple of hours at least to dry because it was so saturated, but I really love just leaving it there to dry in the air and just letting the watercolour do its thing. It's impossible to, I've found, to use a dryer because it just pushes all the little bits of paper about and I like the pieces of paper to remain in situ until it's dry and I find I get those beautiful rough edges around my sail boats, around my sails in particular. I'm pointing there to the horizon because I need now to establish the horizon line and I'm thinking about the white sails so I'm going to touch up the white sails after I add my horizon line and I am definitely feeling that those foreground pieces of white paper that I kind of wanted to look a little bit like waves are too stark so I'll fix that up later as well. Big ruler to get a lovely flat horizon line and then I start in with my white gouache. Now, white gouache is an opaque type of watercolour. It's um, got the same binder as watercolour so that's why I'm referring it to, as a, an opaque watercolour but it's not watercolour it's gouache. I use a little separate dish you can see there it's just a little soy sauce dish very handy to have it um, about all the time but I don't like gouache to mix in any way with my palette because it's incredibly opaque and it will ruin the transparency of your beautiful colours but there are lots of moments where um, an opaque 
gouache is incredibly handy like this where I can paint over my painting and you cannot see the line behind. So I'm doing the same method over and over. I'm adding the white of the gouache and then I'm switching to this brush I'm holding and it's just full of water and then I bring the um, softness down. So again on the right hand side I'm using my quill to apply the white gouache. I don't go all the way to the edge because I want to keep the interest in the middle of the painting and as soon as I'm happy with my white line you'll see me switch to a brush that has just water in it and I very gently tickle the absolute edge of the white gouache and soften the bottom of it. So this greyish blue is just a watered down version of the dark greeny blue that I was using earlier and I'm knocking back the whiteness of those uh, white sections in the foreground because uh, they were just way too stark. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit of detail to the white sails. They were just too stark for me to leave as is. So I add a little bit of um, that soft grey and same method, water brush to soften off all the edges and I do the same to that base of that boat as well. Paint on and I switch to my water brush in just a second. It's a method I use over and over and over to make beautiful soft edges. For the foreground sail, I'm going to put in some yellow ochre for two reasons. I'm sticking with my limited palette. I love doing that. Uh, also because there's a theory that warm colours can come towards you in a painting and I'm just seeing whether or not I can make that work in this painting. A little bit of water first on the sail and then you'll see me dip into that lovely yellow ochre. I actually prefer raw sienna most of the time but I ended up with some tubes of yellow ochre. It's cheaper than raw sienna uh, and a little more opaque so I love to use up stuff that I've got in the uh, in, in my drawer of stuff that is all types of watercolor. Bit of a wet wash just to make that sail a little more interesting. You'll have to let me know whether or not I achieved um, making that sailboat come closer towards me or not or towards you I should say. I finish off by signing my name in yellow ochre. It is a little bit more opaque. I like to sign most paintings in the foreground on that traditional right hand side. And in a moment, as promised, I'm gonna show you my little test for how to test really quickly whether or not you're dealing with an opaque watercolor. And all you do is get some of the color on your brush and He's getting some colour on my brush. Put it in the water. See how it floats? That is an opaque watercolour. It floated. If you do that with a transparent watercolour, it mixes with the water immediately. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. See you next time. Bye.